All right, let's try the uh, free response, 1996, uh, number three. Um, first thing we got to do is show the rotational. We got a, a thin rod of mass M in length L as shown above. Show that the rotational inertia of the rod about its axis through its center and perpendicular to its length is ML squared over 12. All right, so uh, I'm going to take my rod. Here's my thin rod of length L. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to rotate it about center, so I'm going to put my coordinate system right at the center. We got X, we have Y. Uh, this is uh, L over 2, negative L over 2, and this is positive L over 2. All right, so the moment of inertia is uh, we're going to sum all the parts um, R squared uh, dm. So uh, the distance from the point of rotation squared times whatever the mass is. All right, well, uh, the trick here, of course, is we need to uh, integrate over space, not mass. So I have to relate mass to space. So uh, we're just gonna say, well, we have this little piece, this little thin piece here, uh, we'll say is uh, width dx, and it has a mass of dm, all right? So the little piece of uh, length dx over the total length should equal the little piece of mass divided by uh, the total mass uh, something like that. All right, let me solve this for dm because I want to substitute dm out. So I'm going to say dm then equals m over l dx. Beauty. Let's uh, substitute that in right there like that. Um, and uh, we're going to go like this. We're going to make that x. Now, our r is x. It's just going to be, uh, instead of r, we're going to say it's x. Uh, m over l dx, and we're going to go from a negative l over 2 uh, to l over 2. All right, so I'm going to factor out the uh, we have m over l, that's a constant, and uh, we're going to bring that outside, and uh, x squared dx is going to be x cubed over 3 from l over 2 to negative l over 2. We'll put brackets around that. I'm going to bring out the 3. Uh, we got m over 3l, and we have l over 2 cubed minus negative l over 2 cubed. All right, well, we're going to be cubing these 2s. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to be able to take out an 8, a 1 8 actually. Uh, m over 3l times 8. Uh, L cubed minus negative L cubed. All right. So we'll make that plus a positive. That becomes 2L cubed. And we end up with 2ML cubed over 3L times 8. Let's see if we can get rid of... Uh, that can be a 2. So we got L squared. And uh, uh, that can go away. And this can be a 4. 4 times 3 is 12. We end up with M L squared over 12. Beauty. All right. That's what we wanted. Moment of inertia of a rod rotated about its center is M L squared over 12. Uh, and that's what they told us. And uh, you should know how to integrate. Uh, find the moment of inertia uh, through integration of a, a rod, a thin rod. All right. We got the moment of inertia. Uh, now, it's kind of a weird thing, uh, they took this thing and they, uh, they took the rod and they glued it inside of a hoop of uh, radius L over 2, as shown in the diagram. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. The center of the rod and the hoop coincide with point P, all right? The assembly is mounted on a horizontal axle through point P perpendicular to page. All right, so I got a wheel, it's going to spin around. Uh, what is the rotational inertia of the uh, rod hoop assembly about the axle? All right, so uh, this is the uh, moment of inertia of the rod only. Uh, so the uh, moment of inertia total is going to be the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the hoop. All right, so that's going to be uh, ML squared 
over 12. And the hoop, I got something like this. It goes, there's our hoop. And there's our rod. And I uh, kind of got, got some weird stuff. This is uh, L over 2. Uh, this whole thing is L. And uh, this has a mass M. And this has a mass M. Convenient. All right. Both mass M. All right. So uh, the moment of inertia of the hoop is uh, the total mass times uh, L over 2 squared. Right? All the mass on the hoop is at the rim, so it's just the mass times the radius squared, which is L over 2. Uh, so we got M L squared over 12 plus M L squared over 4. All right, so this is going to be... Uh, I'm going to multiply by 3, so I got M L 3 squared over 12. Uh, that's 4 twelfths, uh, which is ML, oops, ML squared over 3 is the moment of inertia total. All right. ML squared over 3 is the uh, total moment of inertia. So why don't I write that up here? I total equals ML squared over 3. Several turns of string are wrapped tightly around the circumference of the hoop. All right, we got to wrap it around there. And uh, this is up and this is down. This thing's got a, an axle right there, hanging right there, through there. Mm -hmm. uh, the system is at rest when a cat, also of mass M, grabs uh, the free end of the string and hangs vertically from it without swinging as it unwinds, causing the rod hoop assembly to rotate, neglect friction, and the mass of the string. Determine the tension of the spring. All right, so we need a, uh, we got a string hanging down, and, and then we got a cat. All right, there's our cat. Oh, hanging. It says it's hanging. Hopefully not around the neck. We'll assume it's hanging by the paw. All right, hanging by the paw. Determine the tension in the string. All right, so, uh, this is actually going straight down, even though it doesn't look like it, because I didn't want the cat hanging by its neck. Um, but, all right, so what do we have here? We have, uh, uh, let's look at the torque situation. Um, so we have uh, this hoop, and uh, we have a tension force uh, like that, and we have the axle uh, applying a force up like that, and uh, we have the uh, gravity like that. Uh, rotated about its center, uh, the only thing that's applying a torque is the tension. So let's uh, sum the torques. Sum of the torques about the center is uh, going to be I uh, total alpha. All right, so what do we have? We have tension times L over 2. And uh, that's going to tend to cause it to rotate that way. This is a negative torque. Uh, it's a neg the negative direction uh, that this would... Cause that to rotate that. Let's get rid of these. We don't need these anymore. We're not going to use those. Those don't apply a torque about the center. Uh, equals ML squared over 3 alpha. All right. And uh, what did we want? We wanted the tension. Uh, we also want the, uh, the angular acceleration and the linear acceleration. All right. Well, we don't know that. We don't know that. We need more information. We have one equation with uh, two unknowns. Uh, so let's take a look at the cat. Let's take a look at the cat, analyze the cat, because as the cat accelerates, so does the outward edge of that rim. Um, they're moving together. So uh, let's see, what, we, what do we got here? With the cat, let's draw a free body diagram. We got the weight down. And the cat is mass M, too. That, that's really convenient. Everything's got mass M. Mg down and tension up. And since it's accelerating down, the tension must be less than the cat's weight. These are not equal to each other. Some of the forces in the y direction equals mass of the cat times acceleration. The mass of the cat is mass M. Uh, so tension up minus Mg down equals mass times acceleration. Uh, let's get our acceleration constraint. Let's uh, relate the angular acceleration because this thing will have an angular acceleration like this. 
and the cat's going to have a linear acceleration like that. Let's see how they're related. Well, let's see. The, the negative acceleration of the cat is going to be downward equals, uh, and this is also going to be negative angular acceleration times L over 2, which is our R. R. All right. Um, I think I'm first going to uh, solve for acceleration because I have to get acceleration, angular acceleration, and tension. So I think I'll do that. Uh, let's see. Tension equals M A plus G. All right. But A is going to be a negative value. Uh, but anyways, uh, A plus G. I didn't put in a sign for A. Um, and uh, these are the same sign. So uh, acceleration, angular acceleration, is going to be 2A over L. And... Uh, all right, so I think I'm going to substitute my tension into here, and I'm going to end up with uh, minus m a plus g l over two equals m l squared over three, and that equals two a over l. All right, it looks like our l's are going away. Let's see, if we got l squared. The l's go away. Um, the m's go away. Uh, all right, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, we end up with uh, minus A minus G over 2 equals 2A over 3. And then I could uh, uh, just take this over to the other side. And we end up with minus G over 2 equals 2A over 3 plus A over 2. And uh, minus G equals 4A over 3 plus 2A over 2. And uh, what do we end up with? This is going to be 6. 8A over 6 plus... 6a over 6 equals 14a over 6 is minus g. So minus g 3 sevenths equals a. Minus 3g over 7. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, it's negative, so that's a good thing. Uh, we want it to be negative. Um, and then... Uh, Seems reasonable. All right. So it sounds like the acceleration is that. Uh, let's find the angular acceleration. Angular acceleration equals 2 times negative 3g over 7, because we're going to go 2a divided by l, uh, which is minus 6g over 7l. All right, so there's our... Angular acceleration. Uh, that's a multiplication here. And then finally, the tension. The tension is going to be, what's the easiest way to find? I think we'll do it here. Tension equals m a, which is minus 3g over 7, uh, plus g. All right, so that looks like it's my. It looks like it's positive uh, m times four g over seven is the tension. All right, tension is four uh, m g over seven. After descending a distance five l over three, uh, the cat lets go of the string. If that it's it's what's its angular momentum about point p. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw this. Here's our hoop, like that, and uh, here's point P, and here's the cat. I'm going to draw the cat as a point, it starts at a zero, and uh, ends at one, and uh, we'll say that he drops down uh, 5L over 3. 
right, so he goes down to there. When he gets down to here, he's going to have a velocity, therefore he's going to have a momentum. We have a momentum at one. So the angular uh, momentum of the cat is going to equal r cross p. All right, so um, we have the acceleration of the cat, and it's constant acceleration, so we can use the kinematics equations to figure out how fast the cat's going um, so we can get the momentum. And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, r cross p, of course, the magnitude of this, uh, the magnitude of the of the uh, angular momentum is r perpendicular times p, the perpendicular component of r. Now r is this vector right here. Uh, maybe I'll put that in red. All right, there's our r vector, r, r, r uh, cross p. But we only want the right angle component of that. We can, e we can either go r perpendicular times p, or we could say r times p perpendicular. Um, it's going to be easier to, to see if, if you see what if this is the line of action right here. We can see that right here, that's our perpendicular, and that happens to be uh, the radius of the hoop, which is nice. So, um, the angular momentum is just going to be the momentum of the cat, the linear momentum, mv. Uh, times our perpendicular. All right, uh, which is so this is going to be m v uh, l over two. Yeah, that's our that's our uh, radius of the, the hoop. All right, so we just need to get v. We'll be all set. Uh, all right, so since this is constant acceleration, and only because of that we can use kinematics equations. Uh, I'm going to say. Uh, v1 squared equals v0 squared plus 2 a delta y. All right, so v1 squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times negative 3 sevenths g. Delta y is negative 5l over 3. It goes downward. That's our displacement. Uh, all right, so what do we got? 3s go away, and we end up with 10 7 LG. And uh, so V1 equals the, the square root of 10 7 LG. So this is uh, M L over 2 times the square root of 10 7 LG. And uh, that's simple enough for me. I'll leave that in this form again. Here we go. There's our angular momentum. And that is 1996. Question. It's